Prohibition was ratified in the United States 100 years ago. Minnesota's own Congressman Andrew Volstead helped create the Volstead Act, which defined what an alcoholic beverage was and the penalties for being caught with one. The entire era had a strange impact on one town in particular. Before Prohibition, stoneware businesses in Red Wing were making liquor jugs by the thousand, thanks to clay deposits. In this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lawrenson shows us the role the city's pottery played in the liquor business, and later, the bootlegging business. Hello, John. Hello. The usual? Absolutely. All right. Skull. That was excellent. Skull. 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 There was a time when teetotalers and bootleggers butted heads, and places like speakeasies and juice joints were desired destinations for people who desired adult libations. For example, if you walked in and said, <clears throat> I'd like a gallon of such and such, my favorite, they would go in the back room and fill it. At the Pottery Museum of Red Wing, Steve Ketchum is part of an exhibit that's on the eve of prohibition. Everything around him is authentic, from the cash register to the bottles, and of course the jugs that were once filled with bourbon, moonshine, and whiskey. So it would have been nice to have one of these in college, if you know what I mean. Well, you know, it probably would enhance your studying abilities. These jugs, of course, are stamped with a liquor dealer name. In this case, the Sandell Brothers. At one time, there were three stoneware businesses in Red Wing making jugs of all shapes and sizes. A liquor company could order up to a thousand jugs a month. The pottery was lucrative. But when Prohibition hit, business quite literally dried up. It happened right after World War I. The Germans were suspect. The brewers are Pabst, Schlitz, Schmidt, Anheuser-Busch, they're all Germans. So it was seen as disloyal to be drinking German beer. While anti-alcohol advocates called it a win, bootleggers took their jugs and ran for the woods. They were defiant and creative. The possibilities were endless. The possibilities were endless. People would go and they would buy denatured alcohol and try to mix something at home out of that. You would just put in your mash, cook it, and you would put it in your jugs. Did this stuff taste good? I don't think it mattered to some people. The feds went after the bootleggers, but local law enforcement often looked the other way, afraid to arrest their friends and neighbors. Some of the most successful moonshining was done in Stearns County, where they produced a product called Minnesota 13. Well, the distillers who were out in the woods love these jugs. When Prohibition ended in 1933, the jugs became harder to find. Today, some of the rarest ones are worth up to $50,000 or more. It's cheers to an era that was, and bottoms up to pottery filled to the brim with history. That was one of the things Roosevelt um, campaigned on. Happy days are here again. We're going to be drinking. We're going to enjoy ourselves. And we've been doing it ever since. We have. In Red Wing, John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. If you'd like more information on the Prohibition Pottery Exhibit in Red Wing, head to WCCO.com slash links. And know of a person or place John should know about? Send him your Finding Minnesota ideas at WCCO.com slash links.